Hello, Rick Thorburn has begun serving a life sentence for the callous and calculated murder of his foster daughter, Tiali Palmer, after admitting to her death in the Brisbane Supreme Court. Thorburn killed the 12-year-old after his son revealed he'd had sex with her and thought she might be pregnant. Tia Lee Palmer, age 12. Love dancing, cheerleading, animals and horse riding. She was described as a delightful girl and a child people fell in love with by those who knew her. Despite being subjected to neglect, abuse, abandonment and adversity, Tia Lee remained a kind and gentle girl. She had many friends at high school. She was not streetwise but immature and naive for her age. Although in the past she had experienced some behavioural issues as a result of the harm that she had suffered, she had not been involved in the justice system and had no history of self-harm drug or alcohol use. Tia Lee had been effectively rejected by both of her parents and had lived in nine different households and a residential care facility. Tia Lee was supposed to be safe in the care of the Thorburns, her foster family, Richard Neville Thorburn, his wife, Julene Thorburn, and their sons, Joshua Dylan Thorburn and Trent Jordan Thorburn. Far removed from the predators of the real world. On the evening of 28 October 2015, Trent sent his cousin some Facebook messages in which he told her that he'd had sexual intercourse with Tyle. He said that it had only occurred once, and that Tyle had instigated it and threatened to hurt his dog if he didn't comply with her wishes. He wrote, I just want the kid gone and out of my life, but I know she is also a source of income for mum and dad as well, and I can't risk us losing money because she is gone. Also if Tia did say something to children's services and she is pregnant then it all gets investigated and I could go to jail, because a court isn't going to believe me over her. Trent's cousin told her mother about this disclosure the next afternoon and her mother told Julene Thorburn, her sister. Mrs Thorburn discussed it with Trent that afternoon and he admitted that he had engaged in a secret sexual relationship with Tyle and that he was worried that she may be pregnant. Shortly thereafter Mrs Thorburn told Mr Thorburn of this. Mr. Thorburn said that he was concerned that Trent may go to prison. They discussed that Tyle had complained of stomach pains that afternoon and that this could be consistent with her being pregnant. It was agreed between Mr. and Mrs. Thorburn that Mrs. Thorburn would visit her sister and the cousin to whom Trent had confessed. She left the house at about 7 p.m. Tyle was in bed. Trent and Joshua were not home. Joshua was still at dance class. Trent left home to go to dance class shortly before Mrs. Thorburn left the house. Mr. Thorburn stayed at home with Tyle. Between 7.30 p.m. and 9.30 p.m. on 29 October 2015, whilst Mr. Thorburn was at home alone with Tyle, he killed her. Mrs. Thorburn returned home about 9.30 p.m. Mrs. Thorburn asked if Tyle was all right. Mr. Thorburn replied, it is all taken care of. He told her not to ask any more questions as she did not need to know and that he had just taken care of it. Trent arrived home soon after. Joshua arrived home next and found his family sitting on the couch. Mr. Thorburn told Joshua and Trent that Tyle was no longer with them and he hoped they understood. The guilt of Mr. Thorburn, Mrs. Thorburn, Trent and Joshua was revealed by their conversations which were covertly recorded. Between the 26th of August 2016 and the 20th of September 2016 an electronic surveillance device was installed in their home and multiple conversations were recorded in which the family discussed the sexual contact Trent had with Tyle and the efforts to conceal this from police. The family also discussed how they planned to mislead police by lying. In those conversations Mr Thorburn coached his family as to what they should say to investigators and urged them to continue to confirm their false accounts. Mr. Thorburn pretended to be concerned when advised that Tyle had not attended school the next day and he assisted police to search for her. At about 8 p.m. on 30 October 2015 Mr. Thorburn told Mrs. Thorburn that he had something to do, and she shouldn't ask him any questions. He reversed his car into the shed at the back of their property. When Trent and Joshua returned home Mrs. Thorburn told them that Mr. Thorburn was out disposing of Tyle's body. Mr. Thorburn arrived home at about 11 p.m. covered in dirt and told Mrs. Thorburn, it's done. He had taken Tyler's body to a secluded area near the river in Pimpama, Queensland, and left her there, naked except for a pair of underpants, with her head and arms partially submerged in the water. 
Mr. Thorburn then continued to give false accounts and statements to the police and told his wife and sons to give false accounts and statements to the police to corroborate his lies. On the 29th of June and the 1st of July 2016, Mr. Thorburn gave false evidence in hearings conducted by the Crime and Corruption Commission. Mrs. Thorburn told police that she had picked up Tyle from dance class, took her home, she was not feeling well and didn't eat much dinner and then she went to bed at 8 p.m. She told police her husband took Tyle to school the next morning. Mrs. Thorburn gave sworn evidence that on the morning of her disappearance, Tyle was, good as gold, normal cheery self. Tiele's body was discovered on 5 November along the banks of a Gold Coast river, it was so decomposed detectives could not determine a cause of death. It has never been known how she died that fateful night, when she and Rick were left alone in the house for hours. While the deputy state coroner ruled Tyler's death was deliberate, whether she died by asphyxiation or choking is a secret Thorburn will likely take to his grave. On the morning of June 8, 2021, at the Brisbane Coroner's Court, Rick took the stand in an inquest into Tyler's death. Mr. Thorburn commenced his evidence by producing a typed signed statement which he said he wanted to read to the court. He then read aloud the document. There has been much speculation about the cause of Tyra's death. I was never given the opportunity in court to give an account of what has happened. On the night Tyra died, we got into an argument. She was messing about and wouldn't go to bed. She was being stubborn and it escalated to her running away again. She packed her bag and started off down the driveway. I tried to talk her around and get her to come back to the house and told her that she was being silly. I followed her down the driveway to the front gate which was around 200 meters and I decided I will bring her back to the house. I put my arm around her from behind and tried to walk her back, but she started struggling and I had to hold her tighter. She started screaming at me and was swearing. I told her to stop because our neighbor is close to our driveway, and it was very late. She got worse so I put my hand over her mouth and kept going. When we got to the veranda, I let her go and she fell to the ground. I picked her up and put her on the seat and she fell to the side again. She didn't respond to me when I spoke to her. Her eyes were closed, and I didn't think she was breathing. I must have accidentally suffocated her with my hand over her mouth and holding her so tightly around the waist and tummy. I can't think what happened after this. I don't know if I tried to resuscitate her. I know that I am responsible for Tyra's death, and it is something I struggle to live with. Sorry could never take any everyone's pain but I am truly very sorry. She was going to be a dancer when she was older. And she didn't even become a teenager yet. This is he maintained he had a breakdown while in prison that left him with no independent memory of the events that night. Rick who had taken Tyle into his home, conspired to cover up how she died, carried out the tiny coffin at her funeral and confessed to her brutal murder, is serving a life sentence. In July 2017, Joshua Thorburn was sentenced to three months in jail for lying to police and hiding information about Palmer's death. Composed and silent, Joshua Thorburn walks into the Beanley courthouse to hear his fate. Are you relieved it's about to all come to a head? Inside, the 21-year-old, who's recently altered his appearance by dyeing his hair, pleaded guilty to perjury and perverting the course of justice. Whatever he knew about his foster sister's death, Josh Thorburn admits he lied or withheld it from police. He's now headed for jail for three months, but Tiali Palmer's mother says it's not long enough. The Justin's system has let us down horribly today. But most of all, they've let down Tiali and her fight for justice. Trent Thorburn was sentenced to four years in jail for incest, perjury and attempting to pervert the course of justice and was released on the 19th of January 2018 after spending 16 months in custody. The 19-year-old. He's accused of incest, perjury and attempting to pervert the course of justice. The court heard in September 2015, two months before Tiali vanished, she told a close friend, Trent tried to touch me. The dance instructor allegedly denied it when confronted by the friend and denied any relationship on five separate occasions to police. The prosecutor was scathing in opposing bail. Rather than providing her with the care and love that she required as a child, this defendant betrayed her trust. He abused his position as big brother and took advantage of her and the consequences are her young life has been taken. The courtroom. In November 2017, Julian Thorburn was sentenced to 18 months in jail for perjury and attempting to pervert the course of justice.
wearing a wig so you don't have to answer any questions. Is there anything you want to say to Tyler's family? Is there anything you want to say to Cindy and the family? Yeah. Julian, it's pretty sick that you stand.